Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Here we're going to be introducing a new system that I'm making, that I'm implementing, that you can use for your creations moving forward, and it is called the HGS system, which stands for Hitch, Gooseneck, or Semi. So that's what you see here in front of you, and what this system does is have one microcontroller that can work with any type of connector that you may have, any type of trailer that your vehicles may be using, the HGS system will be able to be compatible and you can actually use it for multiple types of um, composite connectors. For example, this truck has both a gooseneck and a hitch connector. This truck only has a hitch connector and this one only has the semi truck style connector but I do have a semi truck that also has a hitch connector in case you are towing that type of trailer as well so this type of tra this type of uh, microcontroller or this system is intended to be fully co compatible and modular in a sense that you can have it work on any type of trailer that you may have as of course the hitch the gooseneck or a semi type trailer now also another fun thing is it is actually compatible with my eBoost system so i'm going to rename this the hgs eBoost, and pretty much what that system does is it gives if your if your truck is equipped with eBoost, then your trailer will actually be able to use the motors that it has in the real in the axle to give it a little boost now of course it does drain your battery but the idea behind it is that if you have your e-boost, you can actually pull a very heavy load up a hill, even if your truck is otherwise struggling or under-equipped. So here you see trailer e-boost, and then if you turn this on, it says if equipped, meaning if your trailer is equipped with it, then you can go ahead and use it. So here you see HGS4 e-boost equipped. Of course, these two trailers don't have e-boost, but that doesn't stop you from towing them with this truck for example you could tow the gooseneck trailer as well as many of you hopefully know we released the oma dock and marina and hopefully you all are enjoying it whenever we release a big creation like this there's always a bit of housekeeping that has to be done in the background to make other creations that i made throughout the years compatible and work with it properly so a big one for this marina was the trailers and truck configurations. So as you know, we released a couple of vehicles, but one thing that I've really needed now to update based on a lot of things are the trailers and the boat compatibility. So what you have is a system that uses pretty much a modular style controller where you can have both semi trucks and gooseneck trailers and hitch style trailers attached all in one so with this um microcontroller it's something that i found is super useful and i'm quite proud of to be honest and that's what we're going to take a look at and show you in this video what the HES system consists of are two microcontrollers, one that goes in the truck, and it's designated with the arrow here pointing at the truck, and the other system is going on the trailer here, and it's designated with this arrow pointing at the trailer. So you have to have both of these controllers on your vehicle in order for it to work properly. All of my vehicles are equipped with these controllers, and I'll show you that in a bit, how to connect them and how to make them all work. But a basic rundown of these microcontrollers are as follows. You'll start with your tow vehicle. And on your tow vehicle, you'll either have your gooseneck connector or your trailer hitch connector or the semi truck connector. So you have any of those. And pretty much from there, what you do is you attach this microcontroller. Now, before we do that, I do want to say that from the center of the axle, so from this point here, to the top or to the base of your gooseneck style connector, so if this sort of uh, distance, you can see if we attach this, 
it's a height of four blocks. So we have four blocks connection or four block height to get from the middle of your axle to where your connector is here, but not the top of the connector. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And then for the hitch style, I tend to just put the hitch in the same location as the axle. So that's on both of these. You'll just put the hitch in line with the axle and that pretty much enables a more or less universal style connection. Now we do know that semi trucks and especially some vehicles have just bigger wheels. So in that case, the semi is only three blocks apart. So you will find a little bit of compatibility, not issues, but the, your trailer will have a slight list or lean or tilt, but this is done because the semis generally have bigger wheels. So if it is a truck configuration, like a small wheel configuration, let's call it, or three by three wheel configuration, you'll want to use four. If it is a five by five, you'll want to use three to get to your connector. So with that done and in mind, we will move on to the microcontroller. So if we type in here our HGS, you can see that this is the truck trailer controller. And if we go into it here, we'll start off with the throttle. Now the throttle goes directly to the seat WS and you have to have your seat set to 100% sensitivity. All of my trucks work this way. So you'll have to match that or otherwise it may not work properly, but this pretty much controls uh, your e-boost system. It makes sure that your trailer is moving and all that stuff. Like if we just dig quickly into this, you can follow the path of your throttle in and not only e-boost, more importantly, it controls the brakes. So when you're braking or holding S, your trailer is also braking. So that is super important to connect. Next up, we have our hitch gooseneck semi trailer connector. I'm just holding control here and I'm going to attach it to both the gooseneck and the hitch connector. The next one is the handbrake. This is a really nice system where the actual handbrake of the truck turns on the handbrake of the trailer. So if you're re re releasing a boat down a ramp, your truck isn't the only thing holding this trailer in place. Otherwise it slides into the water. Your trailer handbrakes go on as well. Next we have the key input and that's important because it turns on your running lights. And also if your truck is equipped with e-boost, it ensures that the truck's on before it gives power to the e-boost. Now the last two are only used if you're using e-boost. Now this uh, dually truck does not have e-boost equipped. So I don't have the button here where it tells us to equip e-boost, but this truck has the button. And if you see here, it says trailer e-boost if equipped. So that then goes to the connection and you have the button here, which is on that uh, control panel going to this. And then also you have to plug in your reverse gear because the reverse gear tells the microcontroller to not apply e-boost if you're in reverse because obviously it's going to go in the wrong direction. So what I've done here is these two can be removed. So in the case of this dually truck, it's very easy to just remove, reduce the length. You could remove both of these and it's literally as simple as that on the truck side of things. The last thing to note on the truck side or the tow vehicle side is when you go to select, you can adjust these values. Now the electric motor throttle I've set to one as default. You can reduce the e-boost throttle, but I put one because may as well make maximum power. The downside is it will drain your batteries on your vehicle faster. So you could find a sweet spot where your battery aren't drained as fast and your brake value you'll want to keep it relatively low, in this case 0 0.4 or 0 0.04. Um, and that is changed on the trailer side of things. Now, if you've ever programmed one of your microcontrollers, even here on my truck, my brake is 0 0.8. So you don't, like I don't apply the brakes like instantaneously and have them lock up. So what, what I do is I have this at 0.4 and then it can be adjusted on the trailer side of things. So I would leave that as a default value. On the trailer side of things, 
will follow the same steps. So you have HGS and you have this one with the arrow at the trailer. I'll put it up here just for ease and I will delete the existing one uh, so it doesn't confuse us. But pretty much, I like to start with the composite first, get the actual, you know, hitch out of the way. And then you will go to your variable brake, that's self-explanatory. It enables the brake system. Then you have your taillights. Again, taillights will brake when you're braking. Now here you have your e-boost. So this trailer doesn't have e-boost, but if you did, you'd pretty much have, um, say, a little motor here. Well, you wouldn't have it on one side for sure. Maybe you wouldn't even want to have all your axles with e-boost, but just something like this. This would then be attached to your e-boost, just like that. Then, next up, we have running lights. Now, we just have these little indicators. They only turn on when your vehicle is on. Leg pivot, it says select leg position. So, pretty much, we will put this on our leg pivots. And then the next one is deploy leg button. So, we have the button here that says deploy the um, leg. And it also applies the handbrakes. When this is down, your handbrakes are automatically applied. Like... So that's something else when you, when this button, now that's actually just one sec before we dive into that, but pretty much when your legs are down, your brakes are on. Now, one thing that I wanted to be quite modular, we'll touch on a second, but last things last, the handbrake, you can attach to your brakes on your wheels. So there you go. Everything is now attached. Now, what I wanted to discuss was here. So it says leg extended in workbench. Okay, now if we take a look here, you could see that the leg is currently in the upright position. So in the microcontroller, we say off. Now brake booster, this is, remember how I said that it has a 0.04 uh, brake? If you have light trailer, it stays as 0.04. If you have a medium trailer, it increases it. And if you have a heavy trailer, it increases it even more. So you could actually end up with this is like a brake booster. In this case, I just kind of go off by, by eye, but this is a medium trailer in my opinion. So I put it as medium. And in here, what I just said is you can see. So depending on what you attach it to, you can have different style of, um, you get a different level of brake booster. So that is here. And that just gives you a different uh, multiplying factor. Now back in here, the leg extended. So like I said, this leg is down, but if we take a look at another one of my trailers, such as this, you could see, or sorry, that leg was up, folded up. Here it's in the downward position. So this trailer spawns with the legs down, meaning the brakes automatically have to be enabled upon spawn. Whereas in the trailer that we just looked at, it spawns in the upright position, so you have, when you when the button is pressed, then the brakes are enabled. So it's an opposite system, and truthfully, I shouldn't have I should have just kept it consistent, uh, but it doesn't really matter. With this system, you can apply it either way. So that is how this system works. Again, whether you put it on a hitch trailer, whether you put it on a gooseneck or semi trailer, it should be more or less equally compatible. It gives you a nice control of your brakes, which is in my opinion, the most important. It controls the lights. And otherwise I didn't really find throughout my years of playing Stormrix that anything else was really needed for a microcontroller uh, to not be super heavy and have a bunch of, you know, fun features for sure. But this is just the bare bones useful um, version, I'd call it. So I hope you found this video informative and hopefully that you may implement these microcontrollers in your creations when you are making trailers because i found that they were quite useful to have this way and you know now you have a nice modular system that will work no matter what type of trailer that you may be using i just like the fact that it, this game lets us develop kind of multi-vehicle bodies and stuff like this so it's always fun to supplement that with things like this so thank you all for watching 
Stay tuned for more creations, for more content, and as always, happy Stormworksing, everyone.